Today we're going to be talking about Fresh. This movie came out in early March and it stars Sebastian Stan and Daisy Edgar Jones. I talked about it on my Twitter and I posted my reviews on Letterboxd but you guys seem to want a video. I mentioned that I filmed it and then I didn't like it so I scrapped it and you guys still said, well you guys, I mean like two people said that they actually really wanted to see the video. So I rewrote the video, I got my shit together and we're gonna be talking about Fresh. And make sure you guys stick to the end of the video because today's sponsor is is Raycon. So Fresh is a movie that follows a young woman played by Daisy Edgar Jones. Her name is Noah and she is battling the horrors of modern dating. She's going on dating apps, she's going on these one-off dates, and they seem to be very bad. Good luck finding a guy, you stuck-up bitch. Um. She ends up going to the grocery store one night and meeting this cute, charming, awkward fella who offers her a great. She decides to take the risk and give him her phone number. It's nice to meet you. You too. I'm not gonna text you, but I'll really want to. What unfolds next is a 30 minute sequence of them just going on a date, getting to know each other, having fun. They go to dinner, they have drinks, they have their first kiss. He goes over to her apartment, they fool around and he's like, no, I don't wanna have sex. I'm just, this is a bit too much. Like, can we just take a break? And then she says, do you want anything to drink or eat? And he pauses and then he says, no, just you. Then they proceed to fuck hard all through the night. After that, our two main characters decide to go off on a weekend getaway together. They stop along the way at Steve's cabin. They sit down to have their first drink and after a few blurry shots and echoed voices, Noah falls face first into the rug. And that is when the opening title hits the screen, Fresh. watch I hated this decision I hated the 30 minute drawn out first sequence where it was a lifetime romantic movie after the second watch I found myself enjoying the sequence a lot more I found it to not only be a great creative choice but a necessary choice for the film you get good character info on Noah and Steve in a seamless manner of them getting to know each other you get some funny foreshadowing throughout those clips where you're kind of like what is everyone saying? She's under the fresh meat sign. He's saying he doesn't eat animals. What's going on? Noah wakes up in a new room and realizes she's not just on the floor, but is chained to the floor. She looks up to find Steve sitting in a corner, waiting for her to wake. In my opinion, this was one of the scariest scenes by far. I was, l my skin was crawling when he was sitting in that corner. Sebastian Stan looked so fucking scary and something about him sitting precisely in the corner made it just seem really suffocating and claustrophobic. So I really like that choice and I know it's not that big of a deal and I know it's not like, oh my God, like, oh my God, cinema, like no one's ever done that before. But I just thought it was really, I don't know, it was just very eerie, something about the way they shot it, just like, it made me pins and needles, pins and needles all over my skin and I hated it, but I loved it. After Noah starts breaking down crying, she asks him if he's going to rape her. Steve tells her he's not going to rape her, he's just going to sell her meat. He explains that he slowly cuts off body part by body part to sell to the elites who love to eat human flesh. He explains that keeping her alive as long as possible is what makes the meat more valuable. I love this scene, this is one of my favorite scenes in the movie, I know it's pretty on in the movie to be saying that one of the scenes is my favorite but after going back and watching it again this scene still gives me like the like it like literally makes my skin crawl again while watching it every single time it just I don't know even the, knowing what happens afterwards it just like literally this scene it's just really well done by Sebastian Stan and Daisy Edgar Jones it's directed wonderfully it gives this very claustrophobic uh, doomsday energy which I really like. Noah decides to ask Steve for a shower, if she can have a shower. He then agrees and takes her to the bathroom 
While she's going to the bathroom, she decides to try to hit him and make a run for it. So Noah ultimately fails at this. I mean, her hands, she was handcuffed. I'm sure she's malnourished. It's been a day. She was just like drugged. Like she's weak. I'll give her that. I'm not going to roast her. So Steve grabs her. He says, bad girl. Bad girl. And he pushes her up against the wall and he knocks her out. And as punishment, he decides the only worthy thing to do, the only worthy thing to do to punish her and to make her realize what she's done is to cut off her ass. I'm taking your ass. <sighs> Alongside Noah's story at Steve's cabin where she's being held hostage, we also have simultaneously happening Noah's best friend, Molly, trying to find where Noah is. So she goes on some Google searches. She tries to find out more information about him. She realizes his name's not Steve. It's like Brian or something or like Brandon. I don't even fucking remember what it was. She also finds out he's got a wife and kids. And then she's texting Noah and she realizes the texting behavior is different. Molly goes to Steve's house and she finds his wife there. She starts asking his wife if she knows where her friend could be. Steve gets home and he's like, who's this? Who's our guest? And then she's like, oh, this is Molly. She's trying to find a friend. And he's like, oh, I don't know any Noah, but obviously Molly is still suspicious, so she calls Noah. When she calls Noah, you guessed it, Steve's pocket rings, he looks at her, she looks at him, and he goes, well, You shouldn't have done that. Noah starts talking to Steve, not knowing that his latest victim has been her best friend, and she decides to start asking him about cannibalism. What does it taste like? Why did you ask me what it tasted like? And he enjoys this. He enjoys um, being the main character. He enjoys uh, attention. Let's have dinner and we'll see how curious you are. So he decides to ask her to dinner and she obviously accepts because why would she not? Last time she got punished, her ass was gone. What's gonna be next? Her boobies? Before they eat, she starts asking him more questions. When did he start? Why he does it? Steve states that he started when he was about 18 or 19. And he explains how amazing it is, how amazing giving yourself over to someone in that sense can be. Becoming one with somebody else forever. And that's... And this rhetoric that eating someone can be the ultimate form of bonding, that it is the ultimate way to connect with someone at the end of the day, there's no better way than giving yourself up to someone to ingest. But if you've read like literally any story on cannibals, like the few that are out there, like you're probably gonna come across some that are like, no, like this is how I bond. Like this is like, I wanna eat my partner at the end of the day and they wanna eat me at the end of the day. Like that's what we wanna do. I wish we got a little bit more into why Steve was a cannibal. I liked it that little bit that they did choose that like it's the ultimate bonding thing, like it's the it's just giving yourself over to someone. Like I liked it that they did that. I wish they did it more because I find it I just really wanted them to really make that Steve character full so we could have all sides of this character by the end of the story. This is a real side note, but all I can say is that I know human meat does not taste good. Like if you are thinking about being a cannibal, don't. Not from experience. I've never eaten human meat meat but I have spoken that I would eat human meat if it was consensual like if someone like was cutting off a piece of their leg and they were like hey like I'm giving away my meat like I want people to try it and like people who want to try it like you can try it like it's a meat it's my leg tasting party I would be out like if it was consensual and like, you weren't dead like I would totally like be like well if you're if you like if you're right there and you're saying that I can eat it like I'm totally like I would try it like I'm not gonna try it if it's a once in a lifetime opportunity like there's gonna be other people in this world that would offer you a piece of their leg meat you know what I mean all honestly even with that being said that I would try it I don't believe humans taste good I believe that they would probably be the d most disgusting meat to eat if you think anything from this video don't eat humans they're not gonna taste good and you're gonna you're gonna literally have a bunch of leftovers and be like what the fuck am I gonna do with this now and then this next scene she asks him to dance she's like let me do let me let me get jiggy with it let me let me bust a move right now real quick and you know tear up that dance floor and <laughs> and not apologize for any second of it, you know what I mean? They do this very, very interestingly long slow motion dance scene of them like just tearing it up to be honest. As much of a mood shift this was, as much of a tone shift this was for the film that it was like, um, 
this was a really big build up suspense thriller what's going to happen next where's her friend is she gonna get out like and it's just them dancing for a long time and although it's a mood shift it's entrancing it's it's beautiful in a sense. This scene gets cut between Noah and Steve getting a little frisky and they start uh, cutting between them making their way to the bedroom and Noah lays Steve down and she exits the bathroom for a second. She comes back and she's like hey and then he's like laying down and then she's like Obviously, like someone's gonna get a blowjob, and it looks like it's gonna be him. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And then all we hear is chomp, chomp. Ah! A hungry, hungry hippo just bit off that penis. She comes up, and then she, what, what does she have on her hand? She has toothpaste. She rubs toothpaste in his eyes, and then she runs out, and she locks the door, and she takes the keys, and she runs, 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 runs to the cells and now I know his downfall is a lot more than just this scene but in as simple terms as we can get it it's so funny to see a man's downfall be because he wanted a blowjob he could have asked his wife for one but lust kills his ultimate downfall was having sex it wasn't cannibalism but he decided to have sex with Noah then he wanted a blowjob. He would have been able to get away with it if it wasn't for his lust. It's it's ridiculous. We could all get away with cannibalism if we just didn't participate in sex. Steve is getting messed up and messed up to a point where they believe that he's down. Like, he's down. Like, we can make a run for it. Well, they're wrong. They're wrong because he gets out of the cabin. He gets out of the cabin. He has no penis or his penis is messed up, he's pantsless, he's got a bashed in face, but he's also got a gun. So now he has a gun, he's shooting aimlessly into the woods, then they get him down and they beat him up and then she's holding the gun at his face and then she, her final words to him, I wanna eat them, they're so delicious, she goes, give me a smile. And this motherfucker smiles and then he gets shot in the fucking eye. I loved it, I loved it, I loved it due to the fact that all the gore was mainly on him. Which is such a refreshing thing to see in horror because I have noticed a common theme without horror and this branch off genre of horror where it's just kind of like women being tortured and that's so scary and like that's horror now. When like the basis of horror and like a very big trope within horror and based off of this like final girl trope, it's about this final girl survivor making it out to the end and then it was really refreshing to see that even though there was gore displayed in this movie, it was mostly focused on Steve. As soon as we believe the horror is to be over, Steve's wife shows up on the property. Don't remember her name and I don't care to go look it up right now. She finds Steve's corpse and orders the employee to go put him on ice, revealing that she really didn't care about Steve. She was worried about the business. She was worried about the family business, for sure. She was worried about the small family business, the, the mom and pop shop, if you will. If you will call this uh, human farm a mom and pop shop, you know what I mean? Earlier in the movie, we saw that not only was she a contributor to the violence Steve was committing, but also a victim of said violence. So in this scene, she basically ends up like being like, oh my God, like he's finally gone. She goes up to Noah and she like tricks her into thinking that she's like a victim or something. Well, she is a victim. And then she ends up trying to strangle Noah. And like, you're probably wondering like, why? And you know, for multiple reasons, probably because she fucked up with her money, she fucked up with her business, she killed her, the father of her kids, you know, even though the father of her kids was a little cannibal and she's a cannibal and blah 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 blah. So this draws parallels between Steve's wife and Noah in a way that they both sacrifice parts of their morals and themselves to survive. But at what point is it no longer surviving and just becoming another partner in crime? Noah is seen betraying her own morals by eating other women that were a victim of the same circumstance she was in and relaying to Steve that she understands this desire and wants to help him. But she does it to not only save herself, but the other women trapped as well. And we see these parallels and we see this major jealousy strike within Steve's wife because she was Noah. Like they did the same things to survive and Noah was beginning to take her place. She was becoming 
the other woman sort of deal, you know? Compare the two characters side by side and what they do and how their actions are, you know, displayed in the movie, it kind of shows or like highlights this uh, complicit or it kind of emphasizes selective and complicit feminism within society, you know? Bitches like you are the fucking problem! His wife is almost as bad as him in the movie. Like, she was actually a bitch. The film ends with all three victims surviving and we assume they make it to safety. So the last shot of the movie focuses in on a group of men of all different kinds. They are surrounding a table and in the center of the table, there is a pile of meat. And it's assumed to be that that is Steve, that that piece of meat is Steve. In his final stage of getting the same exact treatment that he gave all those girls, being treated just like a piece of meat. Before I give you my final thoughts, which are the most interesting thoughts, let's hear it from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. I love Raycons. They make wireless earbuds that are super comfortable and super high quality. Raycons everyday earbuds look and feel amazing. They have premium sound quality that start at about half the price of other audio brands on the market right now. With optimized gel tips, Raycons all come with the gel tips, the gel sizing tips, so you guys can figure out and try which gel tip works for your ear the best. So it makes Raycons super comfortable and they will not budge. Raycons offer an eight hour playtime and a 32 hour battery life. So this means you don't have to worry about Raycons dying on you in the middle of while you're doing anything. I use Raycons when I'm filming. I use them when I'm working out and I don't want my earbuds to die when I'm in the middle of a workout session or a filming session because that would literally ruin my day. And so I always make sure if I'm going out, if I need earbuds to last a very long time, I bring my Raycons. With all that amazing stuff being said about Raycons, it's no wonder that Raycons everyday earbuds have over 48,000 five-star reviews. I love them. I know so many people that love them and I'm going to keep recommending them because I genuinely just like them and I use them all the time, whether I'm working or just doing everyday things in my life. You guys can click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash trend to get 15% off your order today. Thank you Raycon for sponsoring today's video. This film can be interpreted in many different ways, whether that's just a classic horror story about cannibalism, a commentary on the modern day meat industry, or a depiction of the disposable view society has on women today. This film has so much to be talked about. It opens up so many conversations conversations. I think there is tons of ways it can be interpreted and tons of ways it can be enjoyed. I really love this film. I really love the director Mimi Cave. I think she did an outstanding job on it. I love the creative choices taken in this movie because what's better than a movie that makes you want to talk? Like that is that is great. If a movie doesn't want to make you talk that means it's not good. So the fact that I want to have endless conversations about this movie just means it's got to be on my top of the list because it just, it, it, I can keep going on and on and on about it. Like there are so many layers to talk about and I don't even think that I covered everything about this movie in this video, but I really just wanted to wrap it up kind of in an organized way. That pretty much wraps up all my thoughts about it. Um, please, if you do anything today, comment what you thought of this movie and your opinions, whether you hated it, whether you loved it, whether you d agreed with my interpretation of it, whether you disagreed, what was your interpretation of it. I wanna know all your thoughts. I love getting to talk to you guys about these movies that I could just talk about forever. Whether it's like a really bad movie or a really good movie, if it makes me talk, like it just like literally like stimulates that part of my brain that goes wee, like I like it just makes me very happy, you know? <laughs> it stimulates the part of my brain that goes wee by basically saying it makes me happy. Wow! You guys can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. My Instagram is at Level. My Twitter is at Level Trend. My letterbox is at Level Trend as well. Please follow me on Letterbox because I I am using it like crazy. There'll be linked to it in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Let me know what videos you want to see next and I will see you soon. I'll see you soon. Bye.